Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. Welcome to Shofar Blessings 52. Me and my mm -hmm. wife, Nalita Hayes, I'm Tony Hayes, and we had a beautiful introduction of Dwight Angelito. Hallelujah. Uh, the brothers from the Philippines, amazing brother who walks <laughs> in some revelation of God. He's a brother who's having some serious encounters with <laughs> Jesus. And, you know, the scripture says in Proverbs, uh, let me read it so I make sure I get it right. It says in Proverbs 21 2 said, It's the honor of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings to search out a matter. God does things in all of our lives where He put forth mysteries and things and shifting things around where you have to really hunger and thirst for Him. Well, this is a journey that we all are on. Uh, 
walking in our sonship with the Father. And, and Dwight is one of the, uh, one of the brothers who I'm talking about that uh, he has a lot to Hallelujah. say about Jesus and uh, some of the amazing things that he's been allowing the Lord just to use him as a vessel, like Scripture says over in uh, Romans 12:1 to present your body as a living sacrifice. And that's what the brother made When I hear about his testimony, that's what it, it reminds me of. You know, and I see, see him walking in that. It's amazing. And with my beautiful wife, Nalita, uh, we blessed to, Hallelujah. Yeah, we <laughs> blessed to be here uh, with you, brother. And man, God bless you, brother, that you're here today. One and uh, I'm, you know, our first um, mission trip was in the Philippines. Yes. Yeah, and you, Mindanao. We went Mindanao, to yeah, yeah, we, we went over there and shook some stuff. It was called Mission Possible. <laughs> yeah, it was possible That's too. Awesome. Yeah, it was possible. But mission, not impossible. Mission Possible. Mission yes. Possible. Yeah, that was in that was in uh, Mindanao. Mindanao. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was amazing. Yeah, so I was just there. Yeah. About three weeks ago. Really? Four weeks ago. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I still wow. have jet lag, so. Uh, okay. <laughs> <You're still laughs> it's been oh. four weeks. Oh wow. Yes. Okay. But Mindanao is amazing. I yeah. really love the place. There's uh -huh. so much awesome sceneries there yeah um, most of the beaches are really great I never yeah. knew uh -huh. that the beaches there in Mindanao Park is wow, amazing wow, wow. so yeah. Philippines is beautiful in Philippines yeah. I, yes. I yeah. love the people I love the land yeah so they have a 24 hour prayer in the there Philippines. now so brother named Gene was telling us about that uh, really they have an open 20, every day they have a prayer now every church is open 24 hours a day oh wonderful yeah you know, all throughout the Philippines yeah, but you know one thing that it. made me think about you man the first time I heard you worship it was that ancient sound Okay. You know, that you brought forth again today, you know, and like it, every time you come here and do that, it just takes it, you know, you like you want to just enter into the presence of God, you know. Hallelujah. You know, something in you, man, that makes you, I mean, you, you Philippine, but you got this <laughs> Philippine ancient, oh, by way of Israel. <laughs> yeah, yes. so you got this ancient <laughs> sound in you, man. So yeah. I'm a, so can you touch on some of the things you, you've been experiencing with the Lord and if whatever Lord permits you to say? Or Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes, once again, I, I really want to take this opportunity to thank you and uh, it's an honor to be here and, no, and an we did it you. the first time you guys, yeah. you know, came yeah, over right. here. That's Right, the first right. day yeah, when you yeah. opened I up, I yeah. was so privileged to be yeah. a part of that. And yeah. now I'm here again yes, with sir. you. And, yes, sir. Um, really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what I can share, really, uh -huh. to be honest with you, is the uh -huh. simple fact that once you chose Jesus, uh -huh. once you gave your life to him, mm -hmm. your life is drastically going to be changed if you allow him. Yes. to do Amen. to do so if you, allow if you allow him to do so um right. christianity um is more than just going to church mm -hmm. um, yeah. most it, definitely <laughs> yeah and once you uh really what you were saying that mm -hmm. is, is is for us to seek out mm -hmm. these mysteries that's and, right and most of it is really in the context of really going deeper in relationship with him. Right, mm -hmm. right. You know, and, and not into the religious acts, not into the, like the do's and don'ts of churchianity is what I call it, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but to really engross yourself with pursuing the person of Jesus Christ. Right. Um, he is real. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> he yes, sir. is real. Yeah. He's more than just what you experience in church. Right. He's more than what you just experience of what you've read and mm -hmm. what you have um, you know, learned right. um, to pursue his presence, to pursue who he is, is to really getting into that kind of relationship where he becomes your best friend, right. where he mm. really becomes your lover, where he really mm. becomes the fulfillment of all that you have. And, yeah. and when it comes to relationship, the basic of relationship, the foundation of relationship mm -hmm. is Mm -hmm. communication yeah there's mm -hmm. got to be a dialogue mm -hmm. not just a monologue like most of us do mm -hmm. like we just pray and mm -hmm. not really spend time listening right and in my life mm -hmm. and that's why my life is what it is yeah. and I don't know if we have time to actually uh -huh. relay a lot of the adventures I have with Christ but uh -huh. but the foundation of it I, I just boiled down my my um, commandments into two you know, <laughs> yeah. and hear God, follow it. Amen. That's yeah, it. Hear, hear and, God obey. And, and obey. And yeah. That's pretty much what it is, you know. Yes, because yeah. I think he's inviting us right now into that place where we mm -hmm. can be like Jesus, where I can only do what my father is doing, right. what yeah. I see my father doing, and I can only speak what I hear him speaking. Yeah. And I think we're, we boil into that kind of lifestyle where where we are in just the parameters of what he says. Because mm -hmm. outside of that, 
Mm -hmm. You have to maintain it yourself. Right, right. You know, and that's where I'm at right now. Is it's really, especially if you have a life where, mm -hmm. where I have, when I've given most of the things that I'm very comfortable with. Mm -hmm. You know, being a physical therapist, coming here to mm -hmm. the United States, mm -hmm. earning you know a lot, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. and having my own clinic, and all of a sudden the voice says, mm. "Give up your job wow. and go to Hollywood." Yeah. You know, and Oof. and and so I. It took me a while to obey yeah. that kind of yeah. voice, you know. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. That's drastic. That's life changing. <laughs> it is. Yeah. But I was so blessed by uh, one person that, that spoke to me at one point, and mm -hmm. he says, Dwight, the greatest failure of a man is to be successful in the things he's not called to do. Ooh. Wow. And so, you know, to be being successful a physical. The things that you're not called to do. Yeah, that's the greatest wow. failure, apparently. And I was good at it. I was good in the physical therapy <laughs> stuff and, and getting people. money and being comfortable with a, with a three bedroom house, that kind of stuff. Wow. Um, and then all of a sudden, Whew. you know, that thing in you that you're really made to do. Yeah. And I, I, I love arts, I love music. There's yeah. nothing physical therapy about those two. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and when the Lord challenged me, like, uh -huh. you, really, you, you really want to walk in the high calling of God? versus the low calling of God, mm. it requires to give up some stuff yeah. and, and put your hands in the plow and never turn back. Yeah. And most of your life, if you have noticed, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you're following Jesus Christ, it's almost like that's always something that you're going to be following, you're going right. to be encountering. Yeah. It's the invitation to get out of the boat, yes. to mm. take your step and walk on the waters. And yes, I'm telling sir. you, when yeah. he tells you to walk on water, you are going to walk on water. Right. Metaphorically, in a way, I haven't yeah. done you know, uh -huh. going out of the water stuff yet. Yeah. But yeah. metaphorically, <laughs> yeah. I love to do it that. is very, it, yeah. you walk in the impossibilities of yes, God. That's and right. walk in the and you encounter things yeah, that you've never word. encountered before, and your Christian life is yeah revolutionized because everything that we've read in the Bible mm -hmm. becomes really real this time. Right, right. Mm. Encountering angels, yes, encountering sir. the saints, yeah, and, yeah. Wow. and interacting with this yeah. supernatural stuff and the right. voice of God especially. Nothing right. else beats the voice of God. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, I mean, when, if there's one thing I can relay to the people out there that are really pursuing Jesus, mm -hmm. is to really cultivate a a relationship where you can really hear his voice when you right. can have that conversation right because that that's what relationship is yes right you know the i think you guys can attest like the yeah. more you get to know each other is yeah. the more you get to be familiarized that's right. with each yeah. other's voices yeah. and that's how right. you communicate that's, that's right, right. Yeah, and, and, i can, I can and, hear her voice sometimes when i know i shouldn't be <laughs> when i'm not even speaking <laughs> yeah, when she's not even speaking i hear this woman i said no have mercy <laughs> See, she is too close no but well, i love being close well that's what dwight is on yeah, he's yeah. he's <clears throat> He's given us his testimony yeah. of being on that journey with the Lord. And mm -hmm. it's like, and I love that because it's like, just like Abram, when Abram over in, in Genesis chapter 12, mm -hmm. when the yeah. Lord spoke to him and told him to come out from his, his family's house, out of his father's house right. to a land that I'm going to show you. Yes. He didn't know where God was taking him. Oh, he right. didn't know where, but Whoa. he... In verse, in verse 4, it said, but Abram obeyed. Yeah. He obeyed. And so that's what you've been doing. God is calling you and leading you, and you've just been following that mm -hmm. voice yeah. diligently. And yes. you have had some experiences. Yes. yes. And not, not only, uh, I'm thinking about Abraham, not only did he obey, but he had enough, God gave him enough strength mm. to deal with his father's mm. idols that he was worshiping. Yeah. And mm. he challenged his father. And he, and he proved his father, he showed his father, and Abraham was, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, that, that challenge that he had. But today, you know, you know, we, we call him Father Abraham, you know. That's true. And yeah. he went on to do great things. Hallelujah. Also, Abraham was a warrior, too. He had, he had an army, man. <laughs> Abraham had an army. Yes. yes. 300 men. They, wasn't, yes. they were serious, man. I mean, uh, yeah. Just like Gideon, anyway. But, anyway. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's, that's the key. Mm -hmm. uh, most of your life, it's, it's you know, as a Christian, uh, the more you get into crisis, the more you really are being challenged at whether you could hear God or not. Right. Because right. there's always this, uh, to me, and how I was reading the Bible, too, I found out that there's, there's this primordial war that, took place in the garden, and mm -hmm. it's really common in our lives Yes. Uh, until now. Right. And the two first questions that was uttered wow. was, um, yeah. did God really say? Yeah. Mm. I want you to die. And then that. the other one is like, who told you? 
So you find yourself mm. a lot, especially in the, mm -hmm. and if you really ask yourself what the, the things that you're doing right now, did God really did say? Did God really say? Or <laughs> who, told, who told you? Who told you to do? Yeah. Yes, yeah, who brother. told you that you're, you're supposed to you're do right. that? We hear that, that yeah. question even when yeah. we believe we're following what God wants, mm -hmm. but there's a little voice that will come. You know, when you run into some snags where everything doesn't seem to be so smooth, yes. that little voice comes. You sure God said that? Did I God know. really say exactly. that? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. And the righteous lives by faith. Yes, and sir. And faith can only come from hearing mm -hmm. and hearing the voice of God. Right. Man mm. cannot live by bread alone, right. but every word, word that comes out from his mouth. Yeah. So it's really important, all these things. And anything that you're doing that is outside faith is what? Is sin. That's true. Mm. You That's know, right. so, but right. we're, so you can really boil it down to like one thing is that we have to hear God because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that's the only source of faith yeah. is from hearing and hearing his word yeah. and that yeah. requires relationship relationship and Hallelujah. it requires getting in that, that secret place you in the secret a, place in the in intimate yeah. place in, in a place where you God. can really yeah. and, right. and that is the journey of really following Yeshua. Yeah. It's not more on what you have done for him. Right. It's not more of your service. It's mm -hmm. not a lot. I mean, those are amazing and good things mm -hmm. that we, sh we, we need to do. Right. But yeah. you, cannot, you cannot exchange it mm -hmm. with, you know, the, the deep relationship right. and that intimacy. Right. that you can have with him. And I'm enjoying yeah, this, yeah. this relationship because he, yes, he pulls you into a more That's right. deeper things That's in right. him. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and <laughs> it's amazing because I'm just a yeah. normal person. I, I don't have a uh -huh. title before my name. Yeah, Amen, <laughs> brother. That's wisdom. You man. know, yeah, I, I'm just a, yeah. a normal human being and, yeah. I'm, and I know for sure that there's a lot of you out there mm -hmm. that are, are normal just like me. Yeah. But I tell you this, that when you are in Christ, you're just not normal. Right. You, <laughs> you are above normal. Above you are normal. supernatural mm -hmm. and you do rule and reign with him in Amen. the heavenly places. So right. what if no one knows you here on earth, yeah, but heaven. you are famous in heaven yeah so what right. if you don't have titles here on earth but mm -hmm. in heaven yeah every, everybody's Ooh. bows to you because you're a majesty amen mm. bro. you know Kings, so yeah. that is the truth and that is our reality so yes, there is a reality that mm -hmm. is existing that we can operate in yeah we're in you might not be known in the physical realm mm -hmm. but the principalities definitely know who you are yes sir That's right. most definitely That's right. yeah yeah, that, you, yeah, 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 you right. They know who you are, and one of the greatest things about that is earlier you just said something about Jesus, and I heard a man of God say, I believe it was Bobby Connors. He said, "If you really want to witness for Jesus, spend some time with Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, get yourself get in that place where He's at. You know, mm -hmm. and those are the things that we say the they'll know who you are when you get with Jesus. So spending that quality time and getting into the uh, my heart right now is focusing a lot on the holies of holies. Yes. You know, trying to get in that 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 uh, that, that atmosphere, you know, um, and get inside. I can imagine myself getting going in there with a veil already been torn to. I can just like call Jesus and open up the door for me to go, you know. So well, those you talked about the dimensions. And the, the dimensions, yeah, yeah. I've been meditating. I don't know if I shared it about the dimensions uh, in the holies of holies. Did I share that with you? No. Oh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, man, I'm studying this out. I found out the dimensions over in Ezekiel 40. One three is twenty by twenty, wow. and we're in the year twenty by uh, twenty twenty. Mm -hmm. So I'm just mm. connecting that. You know, we're in that dimension of mm -hmm. of time. And either God's outside of time, yes. we have dominion over time. But there's a season for years that we count. And there was certain reason why Ezekiel was given these certain dimensions. You know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, twenty by twenty in in the uh, uh, holies of holies. You know, so that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. You know, I'm, wow. I'm just trying to you know. Lock into that, you yes. know. I'm really, yeah. Dwight had talked a little bit about, you know, following the voice of the Lord and, yeah. and, and having encounters and talking about angelic visitations yeah. and yeah. encounters with uh, the cloud of witnesses. And, you know, that might not be familiar to some people. They might think, oh, yeah. what is he talking about? But God is a God of the living. God yes, is it. not yes. the God of the dead. That's right. Amen. Just like All the when Jesus was alive. up on the Mount of right. Transfiguration yes, and, and Moses and, and Elijah, showed, and Elijah up. showed up. That's right. Yes. They right. still, they still, they still it's alive. In the right. Jesus is alive yeah, now. And Jesus All the Father witnesses too. <laughs> so if Jesus, after he resurrected, he yeah. came, what, 40 days? He was walking the earth and mm -hmm. appearing to people. And, mm -hmm. Uh huh. 
Jesus is alive. Yes, Amen. he is. So yeah. maybe he want to come visit you. Hallelujah. There you go. Hallelujah. Be open. Be open. Have your spirit open. And yeah. I know we didn't get a chance to really get into that because I know Dwight has been on quite a journey just <laughs> following the Lord and yes. some of the things I'm... I know you talked a little bit about how the Lord took you over to Israel for a while and mm -hmm. how yeah. he took you somewhere and had you go up on a mountain and just sit up under the stars and yes. spoke to you very intricately. And, yeah. you know, everybody would be willing to do that. Yeah. So I, yeah. I, I, I honor, honor you, you and I respect that, you and, and for that, that yeah, you can bring that lead you in that way yeah. so intimately that yeah. you would. Because every time you, know, you share that, you know, it makes me think. I said, man, if I, could, if I was your age at that time, boy, could I but I'll be obedient to, to mm -hmm. get out and go, uh, uh, you know, do that, you know, man. It's beautiful, man. You're, you're a young brother, man. Yeah, and, I mean, and, uh, that to, kind of lifestyle yeah. is really available for everybody. That's yeah. an invitation that the Lord wants us to really partake in. Yes, yeah, sir. He really wants to experience this life and life more abundantly mm -hmm. in the life of, what, of the supernatural because right. that is the realm where he paid a price for it. Right, yeah. right. He, he died so that we could enter into that realm, not mm -hmm. when we die, mm -hmm. but right. now. Yeah. Right. Death, yeah. is death, yeah. death is not the entrance. Death is not the door. Right. Jesus yeah. is the way. He makes, exactly. In other words, he make no covenant with death. We make mm. covenant yes. with life in Absolutely. Christ. Amen. Amen. So, if so you, that's, yeah, if you think that, that death is the entrance to eternity, mm -hmm. uh, to rethink that again. Right. Repent about that. And my, my, if, before I go and play, uh -huh. my, what I would like to share to you guys is that the life of the supernatural, the life is supposed to be a natural thing for us. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's not supposed to be something that we, ha we still have to go and hunt and whatever. Right. Just be with Jesus and the reality of who he is. Not religion, mm -hmm. not, mm. not churchianity, right. but just right. a time that, that you are authentic and real and intentional with your relationship with Christ. Right. That's what the world needs, That's is the real world. Christians to really show up. That's right. And, right. and if your life is not supernatural, you're believing in a wrong Jesus. Amen. Mm. That's right, bro. That's good. Bro. You know, if your life ain't supernatural, you believe in it. Bro. What you're saying <laughs> is so true because this generation, the people, the young people, they're looking for the real. They're not looking for people to come, like you said, and give them yeah. church as usual. Yeah. That's true. They're looking for a real encounter with the very real Jesus. Mm -hmm. They're looking for a change in their life. Yeah. You know, praise God. Amen. So thank you so much for sharing yeah. that. We have to have you back so you can yeah. Absolutely. give us a little bit more yeah. of that. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. Amen. So thank you. So, praise you God. So, you know, what you heard today was uh, about a, a brother who's walking with God and uh, having some encounters. Uh, Dwight is uh, precious, you know, he's, he's, he's been hearing and obeying God, you know, and uh, this Jesus is so beautiful. He wants to come into your heart, and uh, there's forgiveness. He has already been made away on the cross and the blood of Jesus. You know, there's fellowship with him. There's, uh, there's so, it's so beautiful. The, the holiness of Jesus is so beautiful, and uh, we were singing that song, Show Me Your Glory, and it, as when D. White was singing that song earlier, I thought about uh, the first time I was worshiping God in the month of February. It was 87, uh, eight, no, 88, 89, February of 89. I was worshiping God, and I wasn't singing Show Me Your Glory. I was singing something else. And I actually physically seen the glory cloud, you know, for the first time. And, you know, I, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how to play the keyboard. I was just... I had a heart to be in that secret place with God. It was something about, I re, it was about me. I would remember when I first got born again, I, and I asked him to come into my heart. And I, like, it's like I had another moment again when he showed me his glory cloud in a, in, a, in a physical building on a Thursday morning around about 9 o'clock. Never will forget it. And uh, so this is the Jesus we're talking about. This Jesus is, is, uh, is, is, is so beautiful. He's so loving. You know, so, you know, if you have, you have a need, if you had a healing that you need in your life, call out to Jesus. Scripture says, if any man confess with his mouth and believe in his heart, you know, you know that, that uh, if, and he will forgive you of your sins and ask him to come into your heart. So I'm going to release the sound of the shofar, and hopefully that you will take this, this uh, uh, words of wisdom and hear and obey. And uh, 
So show for our blessing 52. We're praying for the peace of Jerusalem because the Israel, uh, because the borders of Israel is being established all over again. Amen. 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 <laughs> Jesus will come into your heart. Hallelujah. 